How would you, as a freshman legislator, attempt to address and alleviate the budget crisis? <laughs> Brand new, and you're faced with this budget crisis. How do you address that and alleviate that? And we'll begin, I'm going to start over on this end with, uh, with Bill Wells, and then we'll go down the road. Bill? You have, go ahead and grab the mic. Stay seated. Yes, and you can say, everybody can stay seated. Well, the budget crisis is really wrapped up in not having enough money to pay our bills. Now, the problem is not a revenue problem, it's a spending problem. So the first thing we have to do is control spending. The second thing we have to do is, is stimulate the economy. Now, let me tell you something. We don't stimulate the economy by pumping a lot of artificial money into it. And California can't print its own money, so at least we, we don't have the same problem that the feds have. What we need to do is make it easier for people to do business and be entrepreneurial here in California. We have to cut down regulations. I was talking to somebody who owns a drilling company the other day. They used to have all their drills paid off. Now they've had to buy four new drills of $500,000 a piece to uh, appease CAR, the, the Clean Air Resources Board. It, that's just stupid. And, and if we keep making stupid decisions like that, we're not going to be able to keep business in California. And we're not going to be able to cover. Christine Rubin, how would you as a freshman legislator attempt to address and alleviate the budget crisis? Well, I, I like to use the analogy that the budget problem in California is like when you wake up and your arm hurts. You take a little Motrin, take a little leave, you try to stretch it out. Three, four days later, you finally get to the doctor and you realize it's not arm pain, you're having a heart attack. And California right now is having a heart attack. We have gone systematically and created regulations <laughs> that destroy small businesses. So small businesses cannot be large. And when they grow to be large businesses, they move out of the state. We have, un, we have unchecked regulation, for example, AB 32 and the Air Resources Board. The regulations are not there really to clean up the air. So don't let them convince you of that. It's to force companies out of business. We did it with mining, we did it with lobbying, we're doing it with agriculture, we're doing it with construction in AB 32. Cal uh, the government needs to give us just enough to keep us safe and then get out of our way. Too many fees and, and too many regulations on businesses so we can't grow. Thank you, Christine. Brian Jones. All right, thank you. Well, one of my goals uh, after winning election is to get placed on the Appropriations Committee so that as a freshman legislator, I will have uh, influence over the budgeting process in the state of California. Uh, the Appropriations Committee controls most of the budget of the state of California. And what we, and the same thing that we did in Santee, we can do in Sacramento. Last year, when the state impacted our budget by almost 10%, and they impacted it in a negative direction, not a positive direction, and we had to make cuts totaling almost $2.6 million dollars we had to go through our budget line by line, item by item, and department by department to determine where we were going to make cuts and how we were going to make those cuts and how long we were going to make those cuts for. And that's what Sacramento at this point in time refuses to do. And that's as a freshman legislator, what I would do is go through the budget line by line and bring those suggestions to the Appropriations Committee to make those cuts. Thank you, Brian. Besides making cuts, I would also look to taxes. Our oil companies pay no tax here. In Texas, they pay 10%. They pay 10% here. We could save the, uh, the our CalWORKs program, the one that helps people who are low income and child support for students and does so much good work with the community colleges. That uh, we would generate 1.6 million in income and we could save that program. That's one point. Another thing is our prisons are far and away the most expensive in the world. Uh, we could cut the cost of our prison in all sorts of effective ways. If we want to give tax cuts, give it to businesses who will hire these prisoners so they don't go back. We have all sorts of million dollar babies in our prison systems that cost us huge amounts of money. And that's another way to balance our budget. In terms of AB 32, that is generating businesses for California. I would not repeal that. That is generating new businesses, businesses for the future, not businesses of the past. Thank you. Jeff Stone, same question. Uh, 
two things I want to do. First is called the Legislator Accountability Act. By the California State Constitution, they're required, the legislature, to pass a budget by July 1st. When was the last time you remember a budget being passed on time? My bill, or if necessary, an initiative, will require that the budget be passed by July the 1st, or each legislator will forfeit the prospective annual, annual year salary. I guarantee you, if that passes, you'll never see a budget again. And add a caveat to that, if it requires an increase in taxes, it's not two-thirds of the legislature is going to approve it, it's going to be a vote of the people. The second thing is we've got to cut the size of the bureaucracy. Our bureaucracy has doubled since 1990 from 180,000 people to 360,000. We don't need to take a scalpel to the state bureaucracy. We need to take a chainsaw and get rid of a lot of employees who are just paper pushers and start curbing the cost of government. I want you to know that I'm a no-tax advocate. I have, I'm the only one running for office here that's actually written legislation to reduce taxes and actually done so. I support Prop 13, irrespective of what my opposition, opposition candidate says, and I support the two-thirds majority to pass any taxes on our citizens. You will never see me pass or propose a tax. Well, it has to start with us. Uh, we can all say cut spending, no taxes. We need to merge or eliminate unneeded agencies and programs. I support a part-time assembly, part-time legislature. It works well in Texas. Uh, we need to evaluate every program. When a public employee, public employee unions, their rank or thing, our state retires or leaves, we don't replace them. We absorb that. Uh, I'm going to give you an exa another example very quickly when we talk about uh, starting with us. Here's a mail out that I got, uh, and I get a bunch of these, and I know you do too. And it says state spending is out of control. This is from one of my uh, opponents. It came on the official 77th district letterhead. Um, right now, our state spends $4.6 million on these mail outs. That's our, that's our money. It's not them doing this, and it was right before the June election. My opponent, Joel Anderson, is number one on the list ahead of Marty Block, the liberal. And he has spent $246,297 on 794,140 mail outs since this last year. We start with us, and it's accountability. Thank you, uh, James and Paul Clay. Uh, thank you. Part of the problem with going last is that you perhaps have already heard some of the best ideas. Um, <clears throat> I do agree that there has to be accountability among the Senate and the state legislature, the assembly. Um, I, I don't know that I'd be so harsh as to uh, cut out their annual pay. That would leave it only to the realm of those who can afford to go there for nothing. I am a teacher. I could not afford to go there for nothing. I do, however, support the idea that we should cut the per diem once that date for the uh, budget has passed. That would give us a chance, at least, to put some pressure on the uh, legislature to settle this budget on time. I would call it, just to modify my own terms here in Latin, carpe per diem. <laughs> <laughs> so while that's uh, a, uh, certainly a lighthearted look at this, I'm serious about it. And again, that would impact those people less likely to be able to afford to run for office, frankly. And do we want it solely for the people who can afford to be there? 